Okay. I think it's time. Can you all see my beautiful presentation that I prepared five minutes ago? Yeah. Yes. I chose the, I chose the most technological looking presentation that I could find. <laughs> um, so welcome to the GSU HPRC Software Carpentry course introduction workshop and feedback session. As a bit of a background, these we we were not sure if we were going to do an HPC course, but in the last two weeks, we had, I think, five different people across a number of events that came to us and asked for such a course to happen. And this is, at the end of the day, a community-driven uh, group, and the community asked for a resource, and so we're here to deliver it all together. Uh, so why do these people want to use the HPC and why do we want to use the HPC in the first place? Uh, if you haven't before, uh, there's a couple of reasons why that might be. For instance, you might need to cross-validate your model and run it a thousand times. If you try it yourself, you have experienced that this can take uh, a month uh, on your own laptop while in the HPC, you can do it much faster. You might need to analyze a terabyte of genomic data and not have enough storage or memory in your computer. Don't worry, use the JCU HPC. Or you need to run a 3D fluid dynamic simulation. What are you going to do? Use the JCU HPC because your laptop is not going to be able to withstand it. So in summary, the reason why we use the HPC is because there is more RAM. This is the like thinking memory of the computer, which means that it makes it think faster. Sorry for the very noob explanation of what RAM is. Uh, others might have better explanation, but that's kind of what it does. It has more CPUs or more brains, uh, more computing units that allow you to run jobs in parallel. You can run all these thousand simulation all at the same time. Uh, or you can run different chains of a, a Markov chain Monte Carlo separately. And you have more storage. Uh, I think you can, every user has five to seven terabytes of storage as a start, which can be helpful when you're working with these bigger data sets that many of us experience as part of our research career. So that's why we use it. It's faster, it's more powerful, and allows to run things in parallel. So, hey, Lorenzo, if I can just interject. Uh, hi, everyone. It's Wayne Mallet at um, Oh, Wayne. HPC. Hello. Um, one of the things that Lorenzo hasn't actually talked about, and you know, it's, it's only just coming in now, is reproducible research. Um, you know, there's a lot of rules coming and regulations coming around reproducibility of your research. And it is your risk to take, but just be aware that if you're doing any sort of research, computational research or storing data on a personal computing device, such as a laptop or a desktop, can be a JC1 or not, you are at risk because data can change without your knowledge. And you're publishing conclusions on this, and then someone comes back and you know, wants to challenge your conclusions, and you you may not be able to reproduce that um, output or that that result. So just it's it's there's nothing uh, mean dated yet, but just be aware that this is coming down the track, and you know reproducible research and responsible research are very very big at a national and international level. That's one of the reasons, main reasons everyone should be using. Not just HPC, but enterprise infrastructure. Awesome. Thank you for that, Wayne, and thank you for joining. I was actually going to ask for your input for later sessions to yep. Yep. ensure that what's uh, being taught is in line with the, GC, the HPC guidelines, requirements, and so on. So yep. awesome to no see worries. you here. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I do not have a uh, Sunny asked in the chat if you can store in a way to not be edited BBO, oh, but only look that. Yes, you can do that. And we'll, I'm not sure what your question, can you reiterate uh, your question, Sunny? Because I'm not sure I understand it. Today's, this is all what today's session is about. It's going to be very flexible and there's hips of time for questions. So 
feel free to ask as many questions as you want. Sunny, I'm not sure if you heard me. I, I didn't fully get your question. So maybe it's like, oh, yeah, read only, yeah. Okay, if, yeah, okay, awesome. Yes, you can do that, uh, Sunny, and uh, we'll have an in-depth look at how to do that in the following session. And also if, you, if you're in a rush, once I finish these short sets of slides, we can show you how to do that all together. So this course is, something that uh, was uh, conceptualized last week. Uh, so this is the core structure I'd like to cover, but by any means, if anybody has other things that you would like to be covered, uh, today is the day to share that. Uh, these are mostly the fundamentals on how to use the HPC if you are a novice or if you haven't used it in many years and you like to be refreshed on it. So we're going to cover how to access it. Very important. If I cannot access something, I cannot use it. Introduction to the unit uh, command line, uh, which we access through the terminal or shell. And mostly this command line is run with the bash language. So we'll do a bit of bash. And using bash, we learn how to navigate uh, our HPC folder structures and files and storage and so on. We learn how to write and uh, read files, how to use wildcard and pipes to get our code to the next level, and how to write scripts, including variables and loops to conduct our research, and how to submit jobs to the uh, scheduling, uh, PBS scheduling of the HPC. If you're new to this, this might seem a bit of um, mumbo jumbo, but we'll walk you through as the course proceeds. This is what we thought uh, to have as the main structure for the course. But, and I'm gonna say this 2000 times in the last two slides of this uh, session, we would like to see what you want to get from this course. I'm gonna pause now and stop uh, mumbling myself. And uh, if any, everybody would like to share why you're here today, what you're looking for in this course and what you would like us to cover in the next weeks, that would be awesome. Thank you. Uh, Lorenzo, maybe leave the slide where you put what can be covered. So, yeah. Okay, I started. Uh, thank you, Lorenzo, for the, for the introduction. So I'm very interested to know like how to access the HPC, I just you because I never used this before. I've been using different HPCs. And um, and maybe for me, like I would like to better understand, you know, like uh, when you submit a job, like how to choose, like how much, you know, memory you want the HPC to use, like how many nodes, I don't know if you can nodes processors, like, can you know, maybe like this, technical question like in a way that because I know that like for example like if I would choose like too much memory or too many nodes then am I like getting trouble that at least at times it works and then you know like the the job is actually not submitted and um, it's just there waiting forever so I'm not sure how it works at just you but it would be great if um, yeah someone could explain this and uh, and yeah maybe go through yeah, like, yeah, bit of wash. Yeah, it also be great, and, and loops in particular. Like, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if it's like too advanced, but uh, I've been having trouble sometimes, like in creating uh, loops, like on a previous script. So if we can go through that, it would be amazing. Thank you. Awesome, Emma, thank you. I think uh, usage of memory and deciding out too much memory to allocating allocating to job is super important and such a relevant skill especially because when you move to like uh, yeah, other computing infrastructures there's very strict requirements on the amount of memory that you can use and you can require so that's definitely something uh, i think it's important and we'll add it to the course anybody else 
uh, this containerization and singularity in the chat, which is, I think, very important. Thank you, writing. Hello, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to add, um, I'd be really interested in a sort of uh, high level um, best practices, sort of like how you guys use and access the HPC, because I've, um, I've gotten like a little crash course before and I used it in my master's. Um, but it felt sort of clunky the way I was going about making little individual scripts and then copying and pasting them over onto the HPC and running a little thing and then copying that data back onto my computer. Um, so just, yeah, if you could go through sort of like real world, real world examples of how you guys utilize it and implement it into your workflow, um, that would be great. Hi, um, I have no idea about this um, HPC competing, but and my models doesn't don't take really long time in general. But I am now running uh, models that take maybe one or two days, and I was wondering if this might be useful. I know it's not a really long time, maybe for you, but yeah, and my and my computer doesn't. I cannot do much if I do this, so I was wondering if I can use this in order to model this faster. Definitely. I think that's a great use, Chris, because you can, you don't have to use your computer then. You can just turn off and walk away. So definitely. Anything I think that takes a day, you should just put onto the HPC and you can do that very easily. Okay, great. Thank sure. you. There's no, no minimum, you know, if, regardless of what you're doing, um, there's no minimum amount, that, you know, to, to, to do things on uh, enterprise infrastructure or, or HPC infrastructure. So, you know, don't worry about how long it takes. It's not about whether it takes five minutes or 10 minutes or, or 10 days. It's about, you now where's the best place to put it? Where's the responsible place to put it? You know, that's, that's the way we all need to, well, maybe not me, because I'm not in research anymore, but if you're, if you're going to be a long-term career type researcher, you need to be thinking about where is the responsible location for my analysis to be done. Awesome. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, everybody. Uh, anyone else? We got heaps of time. Just someone in chat. Okay. We'll definitely cover that as well. Alejandro. Uh, Maybe Mozilla as well. Mozilla yeah. is the file. What a struggle typing, uh, feel free to add on to it if anybody has any other requests or comments. I just have a general question for if anyone knows, like if at the moment, I mean, if in general, like the HPC is like heavily used, like if there are lots of users and if like, you know, if it takes a lot of time to, to run jobs, like, or if usually it's quite straightforward, like, you know, if I submit a job, usually like it takes a lot of time before it starts running or, I mean, it depends on the job, I guess, but, you know, just have a general idea, you know, like how many people are using it, how many resources usually. Are Taken. I think Wayne is the Wayne. person to answer that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't didn't hear it all. Um, you know, a lot of people concerned about you know wait times and things like that. If the way to use HPC is not to run it like you do a laptop, you don't run one job and then wait for it to finish and then run the next job. You you know create a workflow. You run you know maybe fifty jobs all at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, as a general rule, there re really just isn't enough use of the HPC we've got at JCU now that that's a problem. Jobs 
in if I look at over over a year, over a span of a year, about eighty five percent of the time there's no wait. Jobs get queued almost immediately. That's amazing. There are fifteen, you know, as I said, there's that fifteen percent of the year. It varies from year to year and depends on what research is being done. But sometimes we just have that situation where say a, a few high-end users all want to do their jobs all at the same time. So they all submit like 300 jobs and HC becomes saturated and then you wait. But again, you know, one of the biggest things I can encourage you when, when you do move to HC is forget about the run one job at a time. We've got 680 CPU cores. You know, you, you, and we allow, I can't, you know, I'm not sure right off the top of my head, but like 200 jobs per person, 200 CPUs, one person can request and have run uh, 200 CPUs. At, at one time. So the more people that use it, maybe those numbers would drop. So if we have like, like eight or nine high-end users, those numbers would have to drop. But at for most of the history that I've, while I've been here, it's been more one or two. So there's, because most people are still doing the one job or two jobs, not the 50 or 100 type scale. So that's how you get advantage of HP is to start working differently and thinking about how do I scale up? How do I get this rather than doing one job at home? How do I change my workflow so that I can run 20 jobs at a time? Sometimes that requires a change in the way you write your code. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, thanks Wayne and good question Emma. I think maybe people that have been using the HPC for a while can add on to it, but I, my personal experience and I don't know if that's what happening but usually the only times i've experienced wait on my jobs or them like being put in queue is when i required very large amount of resources in terms of yep. memory and cpus which leads me to believe there might be a prioritization system no. maybe when can there is not no so what happens is the, the bigger the resource you request so it's always be uh, wherever hc you go work out what resources they've got you know, how much memory do they have in machines? How much CPU do they have in machines? Um, and how much do they allow you to have? So the bigger the allocation you request, the more likely you are to have contention. That's not just HPC, that's any computer. So you know, we've got a fire alarm. Oh, yeah. Got the sound of it? Got a fire alarm. Oh no! What happened? I think it's a fire alarm there. But... There is like a drill, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, But I think yeah, on that point, like yeah, like you can if essentially if you request half the HPC and other people, you have to wait around for those resources to become available. So yeah, it's not really like a priority. It's just that like until those resources are available, your job won't get scheduled. So yeah. Yeah, I think maybe also um, how to install things in the HPC. I think that's one of the most difficult things that we had. To, but maybe that's what Riley say. It got might come into the containerization and things like that. Maybe. Oh, which packages? Yeah. So there is a way to look for your packages once you are connected to the HPC. So maybe we can go through that mm -hmm. in, in the access. But the issue is, yeah, the versions of, of them that sometimes we need different versions uh, depending on the analysis. And I have had a lot of issues with that. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that might be useful to yeah and i think confusingly the the package management system has changed a lot to like singularity and containerization but they haven't updated any documentation around it really so it's still very hard to figure out like what to do um but hopefully i don't know if wayne comes back hopefully he can update those docs sometime and i think uh something that i was looking for from this course we will be following like a software car carpentry set of courses, but I, I, I'd really like to adapt them 
to our own system and our own resources and as we go along so maybe especially if we all contribute because i'm trying to do a phd and if we do things together uh, we get more points of view and more expertise into it we can produce some of these resources ourselves even though it might not be our job we need them and they're not there at the moment so maybe we can come up with some of these resources ourselves as this course happens and i'll prepare some of them for the course itself and then people are welcome to add on to it based on their expertise there's some questions or comments in chat okay riley mentioning what software and packages are already available switching between versions okay it's important installing your software uh, yeah resource use is so important and relevant and makes it very employable if you can plan your resource use and calculate how much your job is gonna uh, require so we we'll cover that restrictions on submitting jobs several times i think that's a question uh, i don't think there's a restriction i think each person has a some limits on how many job maybe they can submit i think for instance for array jobs we only can submit 192 within a single array something like that uh i don't know if there's a total limit on the amount of jobs we can submit maybe someone else can budge in i don't think so. i think they'll just get queued eventually so they just won't run in parallel yeah, so you'll fill up your application. yeah. And then you will see who is taking all of the hpc yeah. <laughs> that's one thing yeah you can name and shame yeah. we can show people so on the hpc you can talk to i don't know if people know this but you can chat to people through the hpc system so yeah. someone's um looking doing running a bunch of jobs you can spam them with uh, emojis and stuff very important to add awesome thank you Stefani. any more questions requirements and pointers for this course to come which we're looking to start uh, with next monday so next monday we'll actually be showing you how to do things and we all learn together so sorry if uh, i hope the cool. description for today was not misleading and you didn't come with an expectation different from what what's happening and I, and maybe it's a good thing to point people towards the uh resource to uh, um get uh, allocated to the hpc so i don't know what the website is but you need to go somewhere and sign up to get an account that has access to it and that will take a little bit to get access so if you don't currently have access to the hpc maybe whoever has that link can share it and then for next time, people will be ready um, to actually follow along or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe while I have this slide, if you can get the link, Natalia, that would be helpful. If you want to come along on this course with us and write your own code as we do it, there's two main things you will need. Uh, one is access to the GCU HPC, which means you need um an account created for you so that you can access it and use it and you will need to do that through service now uh, under the general it inquiries you can simply state hello i'm a phd or postdoc student and i'd like to use the gcu hpc can you please create an account for me and it usually takes one two days so yeah if you can do it sometime this week then you can be ready to start next week and code along with us. Awesome. Thanks, Riz. Goodbye. Uh, Riz was saying goodbye to everybody. And also, you need, if you want to start moving files between your local machine and the HPC, a uh, file transfer protocol application like FileZilla. Um, what to say about this? Mostly, Maybe Wetam or Natalia have different recommendations. If you're running a Mac, 
I'll just download uh, FileZilla for next week. Uh, I don't know if other people have different recommendations or would like to point. If, if you're not sure, you want to have a look for yourself, search for file transfer protocol clients, see which one is available and runs on your machine and ideally have it installed for next week. Um, I use DropSync that I think Ira wrote it. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, Ira wrote that one. Mm -hmm. And generate like uh, FTP is like SSH. So like if you have a terminal, you can also just copy it through the terminal, but maybe that's a little bit more confusing. And it's like a drag and drop system. Yeah, I think that the FightZilla, what it helps you is to organize your, like it's more visual for me. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the same with like the Visual Studio Code thing, maybe not great for like huge files, mm -hmm. um, but you can still transfer drag and drop files with that um, system. Yeah, the main, the main reason I included the um, FileZilla or such is because following on, on your comment exactly from VS Code, I think it can be daunting a little bit at the start, realizing how these two different spaces exist and interact and maybe a visual interface can help some people. But we also covered the SSH version of uh, transferring files. So just a reminder for anybody that wants to follow along next week and um, wait, sorry, wrong button. And has not um, gained one yet, get your uh, GCU HPC account set up uh, and you need to go onto ServiceNow and Natalia has put a link for that in the chat. I think Waitama did. Oh, Waitama, thank you. Uh, this was a tentative core structure, but I think after this talk today is going to change a bunch. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is today or tomorrow, together with other CODAR members, I'm going to draft a structure based on everybody's recommendation. And I'll share it in the Slack group, uh, maybe as a Google document or something, and feel free to keep... Um, giving your feedback uh, as we prepare it for next week. And if you know of anybody that couldn't participate uh, today, but would like to attend the course, maybe direct them to the Slack and to the document so they can give feedback there if needed. Um, that's mostly what I prepared and I'm not gonna hold anybody for longer than we need to today. Yes, Alejandro will be recording all sessions and we will have them on, on our website. Not only we have this beautiful supportive and helpful and friendly community on our Kodar uh, Slack channel. We also have a website that Waitama and Kevin put together where we have recordings for previous sessions. Uh, as well as some beautiful merchandise for you to see and wish you have some and maybe get some yourself. And what time I just shared the link to the website uh, where you the can find beautiful a website. Beautiful website. Where you can find a recording yeah. for the previous sessions and these versions and the sessions to come. I think also if you guys think that you have enough expertise to like uh, run one of the sessions that we will be offering, please let us know because we are too down now because Kevin and Jacob cannot, um, are unavailable at the moment. So yeah, that will be good. Maybe it will be good to get a session with Wayne so he can tell us what not to do and how not to hack the HPC because sometimes it happens and it's not our fault. It just happens. <laughs> That's a good. Uh, I'll add that to our list, and I'll try and interact with him and the HPC staff as we prepare the course to get some of their input. Because as we saw in the chat today, they can have some perspectives that we do not have, and some useful input. 
Okay, unless uh, if if you have more that you like to discuss or you like to stay to solve any particular issue that you're having now, feel free to stay. Everybody else, that's it for today, and we'll see you all next Monday when we officially start our course and start coding together. Thank you.